All right, guys. Whatever you guys got, shoot. Well, TAs are over. So, what are your what are your prices? Well, I thought we got a lot accomplished. Uh, you know, the base of everything that we're going to be doing um, is probably in. Uh, and again, that's just a starting point. We, uh, you've got to have a base to start with, and uh, we've done a good job of of uh, manufacturing that. And uh, we see where it takes off from from here. Hey, Freddie, did you get to meet with Gerald McCoy last week during his visit? I did. What were your impressions? I liked the kid. Uh, I liked the person. Of course, I liked the player. Uh, but more importantly, uh, just getting to know the kid. And uh, I really like him. I think the door is still open with him? I do. Are you optimistic that something can get done? I am. Have you been in contact with him since you left? Him? Every day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Here's here, we want Gerald to go out and look at other places because when he makes the commitment here, we want him to be all in. Because everybody that's going to be here is going to be all in, and that's what we need to get to where we're going. So we're fine with him taking a look at everybody else. Right? We don't care because we've told him who we were. And if that's who he wants, he will end up here. Um, and we, he knows the direction we're headed. Did those discussions get to the point of him wanting to know what your projected role for him would be, flight time? Did you get that specific in a meeting like that? Uh, I don't No, I didn't really get that specific. Um, you know, he knows he's going to be playing. Uh, I know the more uh, good football players you have, the better you are, the better rotation is. Um, you know, the better you can get after a quarterback uh, in a two-minute drive. Uh, you know, there's a staggering stat of something like, uh, you know, 78% of two-minute drives. If you have a sack, you give up a sack anywhere along that way, uh, your chance of scoring goes under 20%. So he knows when we want to put pressure on the quarterback. He knows that's what we're going to be about, and uh, hopefully he wants to be a part of it. At this point of his career, is that what he's best at? I think so. I don't know. We'll see, Tony. I hope so. We're trying to sign him. Freddie, you hear all the time, oh, meeting went great, meeting went great. If it did go great, what makes it a great meeting with a guy like Gerald? Uh, just getting to know the guy. His uh, uh, What he says is important to him, is important to us, and vice versa. So did, um, it, did this meeting go great? If it's... I think it went as good as it could. What would so. you bring from a leadership standpoint? Uh, he's been in the league a long time. He's played 10 years. Uh, he's been to the fire. Um, you know, he would offer all those things. You know, we're still young up front in a lot of areas. Even the guys that we signed this year are still young, uh, relatively speaking. So, uh, you know, just every bit of leadership, you know. But, uh, you know, leadership is being able to go out and do something and let somebody see you do it. Leadership can also be directing you off the field and on the field and everything else. So there's a lot of different aspects of leadership. And, and we're going to try to create more than just one leader. You've talked a lot about your goals as a team, and he's – you know, made it known that he wants to be with the contender and compete in the playoffs for the first time. How much do those goals align? And I mean, how much of a discussion was that? Well, I mean, that's always our goal. And if that's his goal, he's coming to the right place. Freddie, did you feel like there were times last year when you guys leaned on some of your defensive linemen too much in terms of how many snaps your starters got and that maybe just adding guys and adding a little depth there? Well, I, I think definitely you're always trying to look um, – First of all, you're trying to look to add competition. And then from that point, you try to add depth through that competition. And the more depth you have, of course, the fresher you can be at the end of all games. Um, but, um, you know, so yes, the answer to the question, yes. But I think that's always an ongoing, ongoing situation. And what was the reason he visited the Browns first? Was it more than just logis logistics and his travel plans? Or, or was there another reason? I don't know. I don't know. I know, uh, you know, John and them did a good job of getting him in here. So uh, that's why, he, I mean, I would assume that's why, he, you know, or our travel lady did. Debbie did a great job. <laughs> okay. Freddie, this might sound like a silly question, but now you've had some time out there on the field. Um, how are you as a head coach? How do you think you're doing out there? Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't try to evaluate myself from that standpoint. I'm just another coach. Um, and that's how I see myself as. I just have the responsibility, of the, I have the platform, rather, uh, to be able to talk to everybody involved now. That's, that's truly how I see it. Look forward to getting them all together next week and see what you have. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, it would be nice to have everybody here. 
um, and get them some work and, and get everybody ready to compete during training camp when we're going to start forming the Cleveland Browns. <clears throat> You know, one thing Baker can get better at, uh, you know, because we ain't got some of our top guys here, but one thing Baker can get better at, although they're not here, is, um, you know, he's still got to go through his progressions. He's still got to learn how to throw different receivers. He still has to learn how different receivers come in and out of routes. I almost knocked your thing over again. Um, <laughs> But so he can get, continue to get better with his eyes and with his declarations and with his, his sights and his hots and uh, his protection uh, adjustments and things like that. And then throwing the guys, different type guys coming out of breaks because even when we have all three or four guys here, we have our top six guys. If we have our top six guys, every one of those six is gonna come out of a break differently. So that's just extra practice for that type setting. He's done a good job of that. So, so, does he have to learn a lot of new verbiage as a from last year to this year with uh, Todd Munkin as the offensive coordinator? Is it what now? Say that again. Does he have to learn a new language? Uh, I wouldn't think so, no. I mean, there's going to be some additional stuff that we're doing that we weren't doing last year because we weren't able to put it in halfway mm -hmm. through the year. Um, but from the standpoint of the core of what we're doing, uh, there's not much much difference. The fact that the Corbett now, that doesn't mean we're not collaborating on everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, Green Bay may call something different than we called it. They're all running the same thing. We had the same playbook at the beginning of the year as we did at the end of the year. Uh, we're all calling the same things, all right? Uh, I think it has more to do with, uh, you know, when you call those things and, and things of that nature. Uh, the fact that Corbett still received snaps at center, is that the insurance? Treader played half the season with a high ankle sprain, or, or is it you guys are still trying to think of what his best position is? No, I think uh, as as a football team, this time of year, when else do you have to to judge somebody's versatility, whether they can do this? Because you don't know what's going to happen when you get into a season. You don't know who you're going to lose. You don't know if you're going to play stay completely healthy. You don't know who's going to play bad. All right. So if you just want to speak the truth, so as ver the more you can do, it goes to the old saying: the more you can do the better off you are. Um, uh, so that's we're just constantly rotating guys in, trying to get them. We're not trying to get anybody comfortable right now. We're wanting to see what they fit best for the Cleveland Browns and how they'll help us win the first football game. Well, then Kyle Kalis has been the guy we've seen get reps in the great yard the last couple of weeks we've been out here. Um, what have you seen out of him? And you know, is he a legitimate contender for the uh, I think all those guys are legitimate contenders. Um, I don't know. Uh, You've only seen Kyle. I don't see it that way. I've seen they've rotated every day. Um, just may have hit the days that you guys have been out here. Did you like? What you, I mean, he was here a little bit last year. Didn't play much. Did you like what you saw out of him? Yeah, I like Kalis. I like Kalis a lot. He's aggressive. He's he's strong. Um, uh, you know, and just like everybody else, we're continuing to get better uh, from a mental standpoint and uh, assignment alignment. If you can't get lined up and you can't uh, know what to do, it's hard to play fast. And we want to be able to play fast. And he's in the boat with everybody else from that standpoint. On the topic of versatility and depth, Dontrell Hilliard has looked really good in these OTAs. Stump Mitchell said earlier that he was a guy you really liked. What about him did you like? Uh, I liked his versatility. I liked his versatility, his acceleration, um, his speed, his hands, his ability to make moves, cuts, avoid defenders. Um, you know, Dontrell is a good football player. And he's he's a special guy on special teams too, you know. Uh, I do not know that right now. Uh, probably not. No, uh, we're, it's just it's more precautionary than anything. Freddie, again, what you were saying earlier about uh, we we know how important depth is, but just this early when you look out there. I know you have a lot of really good front line players. How do you feel generally about the depth? Do you look out and think, yeah, when the twos are out there, I like what I see, or do you think, oh, at this spot, this spot, we need some guys to come on? Well, uh, me as a coach, I'm always wanting guys to come on and come on more, all right, because I don't think you're never, like I said about the quarterbacks, I don't think you're ever a finished product with any position. So whether it be our second team guys or third team guys or first team guys, it doesn't matter. I'm always wanting more. Uh, they can always do more. They can do more in the meeting room, which enables them to do more on the field. Uh, so I'm always wanting more. 
Uh, but as far as depth, that's, that is what it is. It's, uh, you know, I feel like we're doing a good job. John and his staff's doing a good job of providing the guys that have potential to make that depth. But all right now, it's just like our team. It's just potential. And that gets you beat and gets you fired. The last time. Uh, I just want to see him. The last time we. A lot. The offense. The last time we talked to you about Duke Johnson, which was two weeks ago, you said you expected to see him June 4th. Anything change your mind? It's mandatory. Next week's mandatory. He should be here. Good? All right. I do, because it's mandatory. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'll forgive you on that one. One more quick thing. With, next, with the mini camp next week and training camp, do you think that'll be, like you're going to have a lot of responsibilities. Do you feel mm -hmm. like you're, I mean, you're getting ready to go into, you know, I'll, I'm, a test for you. you I'll be glad like when the season gets here.